too much. Uh, you, you've seen, usually it's it's other starters in the Charizard and Venusaur a lot more, but it still has access to its new Gigantamax form. Uh, the Cannonade move being the same as the Vine Lash and the, the Wildfire, being able to inflict that passive damage each turn, it really adds up and could be a strategy that uh, David is going to be going for. Uh, now into this new generation, Blastoise does have access to Shell Smash, uh, a move that it's been waiting to have for so long <laughs> and can really, really boost up its, its stats to do a huge amount of damage. If the Blastoise is able to get one Shell Smash, you really don't want to be facing against those cannonades, especially because you're going to be taking so much damage on that turn and mm -hmm. on the, in the next uh, at the end of each turn as well. Yeah, I really hope it is going to be that G Max Varian and that he gets to bring it because it's a Pokemon that we aren't able haven't been able to showcase previously. You know, Charizard really did get into the spotlight early on, being released earlier, of course. Uh, but there it is on the field. It's Arcanine and Blastoise, and an Arcanine and a Tyranitar on Edu's side. So going to be Intimidates going across. But I feel like Tyranitar is the one who might struggle taking that Intimidate. Yeah, and Blastoise facing down two water weak Pokemon here, pretty much exactly the position it wants to be in. Uh, it has to worry about a potential snarl coming out from the Arcanine uh, on Edu's side. Uh, the Arcanine on, on David's side could be going for a, a will o -Wisp into this Ranitor to maybe neutralize a weakness policy that could come out if the Blastoise decided to go for an attack this turn. Uh, it doesn't seem like the Blastoise is threatened too much, so if it is carrying the Shell Smash, it probably will be able to set it up this turn. Yeah, it does look like prime opportunity to get some setup. But like you said, you have to worry about something coming out from the Arcanine. Primarina going to switch in, though, for the Tyranitar. I think Wise, like you said, Tyranitar in a very precarious position there, wants to just switch out, reset that Intimidate, and be more useful going later on into that turn. But there is going to be a Gigantamax from that Blastoise. Gigantamax Blastoise up on the field here. I'm really looking forward to seeing what damage this Pokemon can deal out. Yeah, the, the Cannonade most likely going to be coming out here, going to be setting... I'm, I'm wondering what it's called because it's got the ferocious beating from the vine lash, and mm. I, I don't know what the what the beating would be for the cannonade. So I'm hoping that we see this come out, but the snarl is going to be reducing the damage from that cannonade. Yeah, really nice switch in here by Yidu, bringing the Primarina in to take the will o -Wisp from the Arcanine. Just saves the Tyranitar in the back, and Primarina is not going to worry about that too much. But here we are, Jamie, you've got to see it. The G-Max Cannonade coming out. Such an amazing animation going straight into that Arcanine. Uh, but actually, Arcanine able to hold on. Quite a nice bulky variant there, and you get trapped in a vortex of water. There you are, Jamie. Yeah, so kind of bringing back the Z-moves here uh, with the Hydro <laughs> yeah, Vortex true. Bay. So just, just, a, just a standard vortex of water. Um, the Arcanine's going to take a significant chunk of damage here. Yeah, the Vortex from the Cannonades, and the Sandstorm is also up as well, so there'll be uh, a little bit of chip damage here and there with the Primarina being burned as well. Uh, the Snarl really reducing the damage from that Cannonade, allowing that Arcanine to survive. It would be able to get off another Snarl into the Blastoise to reduce its damage even further. So it looks like the David just really wanted to get that Cannonade set on the field and start racking up that, that passive damage. Yeah, going to be another switch here from Edu, playing a little bit defensively, making sure that he's got the ball position the way he wants it and brings in the Dragapult. Um, it's going to be another Snarl coming out, but this time from David Katesh's um, Arcanine here. So going to lower the offensive pressure of that Primarina and do a good bit of chip to that Dragapult because we don't know how this Dragapult is built. But really nice switch in here, going to be activating the weakness policy for very little damage. So as long as Blastoise hasn't targeted that slot, Dragapult has made it in relatively unscathed. The Cannonade going off once again it is indeed going to go into that slot though but doing very very little damage so really nice switch in here you can apply a lot of speedy offensive pressure with that dragapult going into the next turn especially now that the weakness policy has been propped yeah really nice switching on the snarl there uh, dragapult not really caring about the special attack drop too much and being able to boost its attack twice as well but you're mm. going to see here it did switch in on the snarl and the cannonade uh, as well as as it's going to take chip from this vortex and sandstorm so it's actually going to be taking quite a reasonable amount of chip damage at the end of this turn it's probably going to be per about half hp yeah as it just mm. falls below half so even though the dragapult's been able to get its weakness policy procs It'll be a bit awkward to go for a Dynamax in this turn because you lost so much HP on your Dragapult and you really want to be Dynamaxing your Dragapult to be able to make use of those weakness policy boosts. Uh, it can still go on the offensive with just its normal Dragon-type moves, whether that's the Dragon Darts or the Dragon Claw, that would still be able mm -hmm. to do a lot of damage. Uh, it would be very close if the Arcanine would be in range of a Dragon Darts here. It would probably have to be a Phantom Force if the Dragapult decided not to go for a Dynamax. Uh, but so there's only going to be one more turn of the, the Dynamax from this Blastoise. Has got reduced special attack, but if it is carrying a coverage move such as Dark Pulse or maybe an Ice move, uh, it would be able to hit the Dragapult for super effective damage. It wouldn't have to worry about activating the weakness policy anymore as that has already been activated. 
Yeah, I mean, Ida's been really well around these dynamic turns here from David. You know, weakening the offensive output. Um, that it's not going to be able to pick up the KOs against the Arcanine. You saw how little it did to that Dragapult. Um, so he is basically burning through these turns and hasn't yet Dynamax except for now, where his Dragapult has hit the field. And yes, it is at reduced health. That's really not optimal. But as long as you can maybe utilize your turns and deal out some really strong damage, they might still be viable, even if you only manage to get up two out of three. But going to go straight for that Max Airstream. Um, you're saying you weren't too sure if the calculations out of Dynamax would be enough. So Dynamax, and then you're going to be getting that KO on the Arcanine and removing it from the field, boosting up the speed as well. That might help out pre-marina later on, um, just to be able to apply a little bit more pressure. Going straight for that Moonblast into the Blastoise does a good chip um, amount of damage while taking some recoil as well. So some item reveals going on here as well. As like I said, there might be some coverage. It's Max Hailstorm coming out, going into that Dragapult, but you can really see the reduced damage here on that Blastoise. Edu has really done well to neutralize the offensive output that the Blastoise can give. Yeah, so uh, very useful Dynamax here, even at half HP with the Dragapults. Uh, being able to take out the Arcanine, avoiding any will that could have uh, neutered this mm. this Dragapult, and really being able to to tank that, that Hailstorm coming out from the Blastoise. So just showing the significance that one one bit of damage reduction can do to your, your Dynamax, because the Blastoise has used its three turns. It has been able to get the Cannonade on the field and do some nice damage over the turns, but this Dragapult was able to really shrug off the Hailstorm. It's been able to survive even though it was such, such low HP when it Dynamaxed. Uh, Cinderace is not a Pokemon that's going to be, want to be facing down a plus two Dragapult either. Mm -hmm. The Dragapult's gone for an Airstream, so it's definitely going to be outspeeding everything. Maybe the Primarina will be able to outspeed uh, the Cinderace if it gets another Airstream boost. It'll be close if the Blastoise is going to be in, in Airstream if that's the target that Eddie wants to go for. Blastoise does have some, some very good defenses. So it'll be quite close and maybe a little bit risky if the, the Dragapult wants to airstream the Blastoise. But we've seen that the Peru Marina already outspeeds Blastoise just at one stage of increased speed. So maybe the Dragapult wants to target the Cinderace here. Uh, not the bulkiest of Pokemon would almost certainly go down to any move that mm -hmm. the, the Dragapult would want to go for. And saw the damage from the Moonblast from the Peru Marina before. It's not going to be doing too much damage again to the Blastoise. Uh, so it, it depends on which which target that the Dragapult really wants to prioritize here, because it really has its choice of KO. Oh, Cinder is going for the Sucker Punch here. Libro ability, going to turn it into that Dark type to get the same type of attack bonus. Such great ability on that Pokemon. And it picks up a KO against that Dragapult. So Dragapult was only able to actually utilize one of its Dynamax moves and a willful victim to the Sucker Punch coming out there from Cinderace, which puts David in a much stronger position here. Um, going for the Moonblast from that Purina, going to target down into that Cinderace with the Dark Typing. Will be super effective damage, uh, but I believe the Snarl early on that Primarina is really working Ooh. hard. Iron Defense coming out here from the Blastoise. So you've just touched on Blastoise's defensive. De uh, defensive stats. It looks like Blastoise is kind of going, Jamie, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to give even more bulk to my defense stat. Yeah, that, that is a big surprise. Also the Sucker Punch as well. It's not the most uncommon move on Cinderace, uh, but it does tend to be dropped for a lot of other coverage moves. So uh, a, ni a nice trick from David here with that Sucker Punch. A really good move choice to be able to take out that Dragapult, even though it was so fast with those Airstream boosts because of all that damage from previously, it was definitely in range of that Sucker Punch, and Iron Defense, a very interesting move on Blastoise, usually indic indicative of a body press, and mm. bringing in your Tyranitar against a, a Pokemon that probably <laughs> is going to be body pressing a plus two defense is, is not ideal here. Uh, the Cinderace managed to survive the Moonblast, even though it was super effective after turning into the Dark type, so that was quite nice coverage from Edu, uh, covering for that Sucker Punch by being able to go for a super effective move. The Cinderace was able to survive that hit, and it puts David in a really nice position. He does have that hmm. body press on Blastoise. He's going to be really threatening down that Tyranitar. The Primaruna is so low that it would be in range of any move that David wants to go for, and that's probably why Edu is protecting it. Yeah, defensive plays here for me, dude. It's going to be the Pyro Ball coming out from the Cinderace, um, taking us up into the Fire type. That will leave it vulnerable to both the Tyranitar and the Primarina going forward. Tyranitar going for the Rock Slide, um, going to be able to pick up the KO on that Cinderace and do a little bit of chip to that Blastoise. But I think the critical thing here is to be trying to get a flinch on the Blastoise so it cannot go for any fighting type moves and it has indeed gone for that body press going into that Tyranitar, taking it down to one HP thanks to the Focus Sash and of course Sandstorm. Really, really good being able to change that weather. Previously, it was the hail, and that would have taken away that one HP of damage from that Tyranitar, but its ability really coming in helpful here and allowing it to survive out the turn. 
Yeah, and the Cannonade finished the last turn as well, and that would have been able to take out the Focus Sash on the Tyranitar. Uh, but we're seeing the Tyranitar on David's side as well. So it's going to be very important, the, the speed interactions with this Tyranitar uh, on both sides of the field. Uh, Edu's Tyranitar was faster than David's Blastoise, and that means that the Blastoise won't be able to pick up the K on the Tyranitar. So it's going to... It's going to come down to whether David's running a, a fast Tyranitar as well, whether it's able to move first, and it Ooh. looks like it is a fast Tyranitar. Yeah, it's a fast and an accurate Tyranitar. Going to connect the rock side on both of the Pokemon and get a double KO there against Edu. I mean, this match has been one that really came down to damage output at the end of the day. Blastoise here going for the body press, going into the Abyss um, as we get some sand damage coming around as well. Um, Arcanine um, in the back there for Edu, but really not really not going to be able to do too much against both of these, particularly with the speed of that Tyranitar, but the one thing that's been interesting with this game is how the damage calculations have really added up. Those liquid of chip damage, either from the hail or from the sand, uh, from the water vortex as well, just constantly chipping away at Edo's team. And even though Edo was able to kind of neutralize the big damage from that Blastoise, David was still constantly applying pressure while Edo was switching his Pokemon and not always being able to attack. Yeah, and the fact that he was able to uh, only use one turn of Dynamax as well, while the mm. Cinderace pins the, the Dragapult with Sucker Punch. Um, yeah, it was re really nice showing from, from David here. Such, an, such a quirky Blastoise, but uh, really putting in the work there uh, with the with the Cannonade Chip and then the Iron Defense Body Press, which re really did, did mm. well against that Tyranitar. A really interesting set uh, coming out from the Blastoise. And we saw the Hailstorm as well, so it's going to be carrying a water move. Uh, either Blizzard or Ice Beam, then Iron Defense Body Press. So, a very interesting set from that Blastoise. Yeah, it's a lot of information revealed on the Blastoise. Obviously, we play best of three sets, so that's something that Edu can take on board and try and use to his advantage going forward, that he's got that extra knowledge he didn't have in game one. But like we're saying, I love that Body Press set on there because it gives that Blastoise so much more versatility. You could see how much his damage output was neutralized previously. It wasn't dealing as much damage with its water and ice type moves. But then when you use a move that comes off another stat rather than your offensive ones, you can really change things up and put them into your favor. So going for that iron defense basically meant, yes, my normal moves, the, the ones I normally would look at my offensive stats with aren't dealing the damage I want. So let's switch that, build up my defense and click that body press button. Yeah, it's, it's able to, to boost the offenses with the body press, but also shrug off all the, the physically offensive moves that's coming out from, from Edu's side. And he's got a reasonable amount of physical attackers as well. So not really any hard way to break through the Blastoise as well. Mm. It doesn't look like he's got any super effective moves. So the Blastoise is looking like a really good pick for David, being able to set up that cannonade and then set up those iron defenses with the body presses. So it's gonna be it's gonna be quite hard for Edu to break through that Blastoise. If it goes for that that Dynamax or the Gigantamax, it's going to be able to survive for multiple turns. Even though he's able to reduce the damage output with the Snarl, that doesn't reduce the damage output from an iron defense body press. Exactly, and of course you're boosting up your body press by boosting your defences, but like you said, you're also boosting up your defences by boosting up your defences. Um, and there's a lot of physical attackers on um, Edu's team there, so unless he's able to break through with maybe um, loads of flinches to stop it dealing some damage and just maybe get a few cheeky critical hits in there, it is going to be a force to be stopped. And in DD coming out now in the pairing, I really, really like this because it allows, like you said earlier, a little bit of that kind of setup scenario where you can go for some redirection, maybe get the iron defense in early if you want, also using the Psychic Seed to boost up your defenses. Basically, this Blastoise could start game two, boosting itself up and putting itself in a great position to just stay there all game. Yeah, this Blastoise is looking fantastic now. We were speaking about the iron defenses reducing the, the physical attacks coming out, but Psychic Seed is going to make this Blastoise such a nightmare for Edu to be able to take out because he doesn't have anything super effective against it. And it is now already so bulky against this pre Marina. The Indeedee will be able to redirect anything that the Dragapult would want to go for. It would allow the Blastoise to set up an Iron Defense. And then even if David doesn't want to go for those Body Presses, he's against a Ghost type and a Fairy type at the moment. Even if he gets the Defense boost with the Iron Defense, he can just use that to bulk himself out if he goes for a Gigantamax the next turn. And it'll be so hard for Ellie to break through this Blastoise, but no Iron Defenses this turn. It looks like uh, Blastoise is just going to be going straight for that Gigantamax. Yeah, gonna get itself boosted up in a slightly different way by boosting up its HP, um, going into its Gigantamax stat. And I feel like if you're David, you know that Blastoise is gonna be the target because Edu cannot afford to let it get set up. So you might as well boost yourself up, get the HP and start dealing out some big damage while you're not gonna be as weakened. The Dragon Darts here coming out gonna obviously target into both of the Pokemon they're doing some good chip damage. Um, as indeed he goes for Expanding Force, one of the new moves gonna be amazing in this terrain, um, dealing some good chip damage to um, the Primarina, but I actually some decent damage again to that Dragapult, once again weakening 
the potential for the Dragapult to go for the Dynamax later on. You can see now by the Cannonade, it's gone down to below 50% as well, um, really putting the Dragapult in a precarious position. Primarina are going to go for a Moonblaster, decent amount to the Blastoise, and critically gets a special attack drop as well. Yeah, that special attack drop could be crucial here, as we saw how much the, the Cannonade had been reduced previously, but... Yeah, but he's, he's, Edu's only managed to do about a quarter damage to that Blastoise, using up almost all of the HP on the Dragapult, so surely not going to be Dynamaxing it this time. We saw how weak the Dragon Darts was. It did barely any damage to the Blastoise and Ndidi without that weakness policy boost. And yes, the, the Dragapult could be in range of another Vortex from the Cannonade, may not even be, need to target it this turn. And the Expanding Force doing a lot of damage from the Ndidi as well. Uh, one of the nice things for Edu is that the Pre-Marina isn't affected by that Vortex, uh, but it's still going to be putting a lot of damage onto the field. Yeah, once again playing defensively, going for the Protect. Dragon Dart's coming up once again, but really not dealing too much damage at all. It's chipping away at that Ndidi though, so removing the potential redirection, but Ndidi, now that it's got this move expanding force, has lent itself a little bit more to being useful in an offensive situation um, as it can target both Pokemon here going for getting the KO against that Dragapult so it's completely been removed from the field and Blastoise going for the Max Hailstorm so not sure which one this went into but obviously there's only one Pokemon left on the field so it's going to be retargeted down into that Pre-Marina to a little bit of chip through the Protect as well but I think most critically here setting up the Hail um, we talked a little bit about how in game one that chip damage constantly adding up really did help out David in the end you know you've got the Vortex going away all the Pokemon except Pre-Marina but the Hail chip will still be able to connect and start chipping away through EG's Pokemon. Yeah, being able to chip the Pre-Marina even without the Vortex being able to affect it here. Uh, but we saw in the game one that the Tyrannosaur came in after the, the Vortex had finished, but now the Vortex is set up while this Tyrannosaur is on the field, so the Sash will be broken at the end of the turn, uh, whatever happens if this Tyrannosaur wants to stay on the field. It did get, uh, Pre-Marina did get a special attack drop from the Moonblast, so the Cannonade into the Tyrannosaur won't be doing too much damage, but David knows that it's not a weakness policy on the Tyrannosaur, so you can feel very safe going for that uh, uh, Cannonade into the Tyrannosaur. Maybe even go for a Knuckle with off that Body Press into the Tyrannosaur as well. Uh, but it would be off the, the attack stat, which hasn't been reduced yet because the Arcanine hasn't come in to intimidate the Blastoise, so that may be what David will want to go for, but this Tyrannosaur is definitely the best, best chance to Dynamax for Edu here. Yeah, it certainly is going to be Dynamaxing up. You can see the potential synergy coming out here. If the Tyranitar goes for something like a Max Darkness, it can do some really good super effective damage to that Ndidi, but also critically will lower the special defense of the opposing Pokemon, and that's something that can help out the Primarina later on. Um, you need to be able to get that Blastoise back down to neutral special defense for Primarina to really stand the chance of breaking through its defenses and picking up some damage. Um, so the longer the... Tyranitar is able to hang on, be able to keep going for these Max Darknesses, the more it will help out Edu in the endgame. Indeed, he will be KO'd though to that Max Darkness as Blastoise does go for the Cannonade again. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see this going straight into that Tyranitar, as you can see, doing a good little chip of damage there thanks to the bulk and the sand being up as well really helping it out and you can see already that special defense the moonblast coming out from the Primarina dealing so much more damage to that Blastoise and actually putting it in a really vulnerable position while these Dynamax turns now over for Blastoise. It's going to return back down to its um, normal size and will be a lot more vulnerable to something like a Moonblast. And it's taken a lot of damage as well, so probably in range of any move that the Tyranitar uh, wants to go for as well. The Tyranitar for David is going to be coming in as well. We did see it move before Edu's Tyranitar in the previous game, and if it is carrying something like that superpower, it could potentially be picking up that knockout on the Tyranitar as well. So. Um, yeah, it's still looking like quite a good position for David. The uh, Blastoise is put very low, it doesn't have an Iron Defense boost, so it won't be able to do too much damage to the Tyranitar with a Body Press, but if the Tyranitar on David's side does have Superpower, you could just double up into the Tyranitar with a Body Press and a Superpower, and if it ended up being a Speed Tie in the previous game and the Tyranitar was able to uh, fire off a Knuckle into the opposing Tyranitar first, uh, before that Superpower comes out, the Body Press would still be able to do a lot of damage to that Tyranitar be quite close whether it would be able to pick up a knockout because there was no iron defense uh, but yeah it's just still looking like quite a nice position for david especially if that tyranitar is actually going to be moving first in this game as well yeah a wide switch here from Edu, being able to bring in the intimidate um to most critically affect that tyranitar if it is going to go for something like a superpower and it is speedier like we saw in game one it's going to help that tyranitar be able to survive it um going for that superpower the intimidate really really crucial there tyranitar able to hang on 31 hp um and the defenses and attack being dropped on that tyranitar as well so it's really looking in a precarious position 
Max Darkness coming out, going straight into that Blastoise. Going to be able to pick up the KO and lower the special defense again of that Tyranitar. Um, but really nice switch there by Yudo, bringing in the Arcanine. Of course, as well, that Tyranitar with its lower defenses on David's side will now be sitting a lot more vulnerable. But you still have to worry if you do because it's a very fast Tyranitar. Something like a Rock Slide can still do some decent damage. Yeah, the Tyrannus is in range of any attack that, that David wants to go for now. And Arcanine is almost certainly going to be fast in that Tyranitar as well. So if it has been a speed tie that David's won twice in a row, he doesn't even need to worry about that anymore. The Arcanine would be able to pick up that final bit of damage onto the Tyranitar as well. And Arcanine won't be doing, able to do too much to the, the opposing Tyranitar on David's side of the field as well. It could burn it with a Will-O-Wisp, but then that's still not doing too much damage. And and yeah, it's, it's still looking quite nice for, for David. He has got it down to his final two Pokemon, and he has reduced his attack with the Tyranitar as well, and there's no way to reset that by switching out and back mm -hmm. in now. But it did enough. The superpower put the Tyranitar in range of whatever attack that the Arcanine would want to go for. Even a Burns uh, Tyranitar going for a Rock Slide would still do a nice amount of damage to the to the Arcanine on Edu's side, and it would end up beat it, being able, still being able to beat that Arcanine, as it wouldn't really be able to touch the Tyranitar without something like a close combat. But because we've seen mm -hmm. it, it is carrying that smell, it's probably going to be more of a supportive Arcanine and may not have access to that move. Yeah, with the clock ticking down there, but time's out for the Tyranitar on Edu's side. Going to be hit by another superpower here. Easily picks up the, the two HP of damage needed, um, and Edu will lose his Dynamax Pokemon here once again. Um, managed to get two Dynamax turns off though, and it really did help out by lowering that special defense, but Arcanine here doing its best, going for the Will-O-Wisp into the Tyranitar, does manage to connect, which will help out the Arcanine a little bit more. You know, this Tyranitar is really depleted in the offensive output that it can normally do. You can see there as well the Snarl damage, really not doing too much to Arcanine at all. The critical Pokemon here has got the Prima Arena in the back, a Pokemon that can deal a lot of super effective damage to both the Pokemon on David's side here, but its HP has been really heavily reduced. And if the Arcanine on David's side is going to be able to connect those Snarls, it's going to be dealing even less damage. Yeah, and the Tyranitar on David's side moving for both Arcanines here, so probably not a speed type, probably going to be a choice scarf on that Tyranitar, unless both of the Arcanines are run incredibly slow and bulky, which is something <laughs> that we have seen in previous formats. It was the preferred setback in the VGC 17 format to have just incredibly bulky Arcanines, uh, but in, in general you need to be able to outspeed Excadrills in this format, so you do see a lot of faster Arcanines. But if that Tyranitar is choice scarf, it is going to be locked into that superpower, which really is not going to be threatening any damage now that it is burned and at minus two stages of attack. So uh, really has to rely on this Arcanine to be able to reduce the damage output from this Prima Arena. Yeah, going for that superpower. I believe your suspicions will be correct here with the scarf. Um, there's no reason to go for superpower in this situation. Something like a rock slide would be much better. So the fact that it's sticking with superpower suggests it is locked in. Snarl coming out, doing very little damage, but this Prima Arena could be key. Uh, being able to go for the Hyper Voice here, um, obviously turning itself into the water type, um, will be able to deal some really big damage, but of course going to be reduced by this Snarl as well. Was able to connect from the Arcanine on David's side into that Prima Arena, um, and as long as it's able to survive and stay on the field, it can go for another one after this turn. You see how much damage that did there, even after another Snarl. Um, it's going to be able to deal out big damage, but that Sand and the Life Void Recoil, it's going to, I think, come down to really the slither of HP at the end of these turns. Yeah, it's going to be taking taking the chip from the Sandstorm, probably going to be in range of a, a Superpower and a Snarl. It's got 18 HP, that's going to be very Ooh. close, because the Tyranitar is now at minus three stages of attack as well. The Superpower, I think, did 10 damage before, so it's going to be very close. If the Prima is able to survive both of these moves, then it, it would be able to fire off another high Poise, but it's actually going to be protecting itself. Yeah, just go for the Protect Tyranitar again, targeting into that Prima Arena, knows that it is the Pokémon that can Force a game three here. Um, Snarl just doing a little bit more shift to both of these opposing Pokemon. Um, possibly just trying to reduce the Snarl damage that the Arcanine can deal out here at this situation. Um, so the Primarine is able to hang on, potentially. Um, gonna be going for the Heat Wave though, however. Obviously, gonna not connect on Primarine, thanks to Protect. And does a little bit of damage there to the Arcanine. But actually, really well timed there by Edu. The Sand... And it's safe there from taking any damage. And Tyranitar's going to have its health depleted a little bit by that burn. Yeah, because the Sandstorm was ending that turn, that was a very safe uh, protect on the Prima Arena, because it does need to survive this combination of Superpower and Heat Wave, and Snarling down the Arcanine gives it the best chance. So it's going to be Ooh. very close, because the, uh, the Arcanine on Edu's side has been moving first most of the time. It's probably going to be Snarling again. So this Arcanine on uh, David's side needs to pick up this knockout on the Prima Arena right now. 
yeah, this is where it really gets tense. And oh, it's so, so stressful for these players in this situation. Arcanine has to be able to connect this heat wave first of all. But actually, Primarina does manage to avoid. Um, so we'll never know whether the heat wave would have been enough or not, as it doesn't connect. And Primarina is able to go for that hyper voice and pick up a double KO. Yeah, so uh, going to be putting it back for, for Edu here. Uh, very crucial dodge on that Pre Marina. Could have been very close if that heat wave mm. would have been able to, to KO it. The Pre Marina is going to KO itself to the Life Orb recoil, but getting off that final hyper voice uh, was very crucial. And yeah, that was, that was such a close end game. Uh, <laughs> just, just came down to that heat wave and would have been so close if that would have been able to pick up the knockout on the Pre Marina. Yeah, that really was a very intense finish to the game two. And I mean, it was, to be honest, game two was an intense game throughout. With the leads that David led with that Blast Voice and Ndidi, he really looked to be in a really strong position. And it was such an offensive threat and defensive threat, I suppose, um, to Edu. And if he wasn't able to get rid of that Blast Voice quick at the beginning of the game, it was going to be able to sit there at the end, as we saw in game one, and just be able to run through the rest of Edu's team. Um, but he was able to successfully remove it from the field. You know, it went for its Dynamax turns, did do some decent damage, but ultimately came out of its Dynamax without that longevity that it really likes to have um, with the set that Edu, um, set that David has built onto it. And then at the end, making sure the Premarina was saved in the back for that end game against the Arcanine and the Tyranitar was really masterful. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very good from from Edu coming out here because uh, he can't really take out the Blastoise quickly at all. We saw how much damage the, the Dragon Blast was doing from the, the Dragapults without any weakness policy boost. The Dr Blastoise is going nowhere if it goes for that Gigantamax form. And indeed, he was able to keep it somewhat safe. Uh, could have been able to go for a Body Press to reduce the damage uh, from those physical attacks. But as we saw, it was taking almost nothing from the Dragon Blast. Probably doesn't need to be able, uh, going for that. And mm. really wants to set up the Cannonade to get that passive damage on the field. But something that Edo is doing very well, he's keeping the water type that he has on the field for as long as possible. So only one of his Pokemon is taking that Vortex damage. Yeah, that's true. Really being able to utilize the tie things against some of the problems that are being set out on the field. And I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Tyranitar come out here from um, Edu, which is exactly what we've seen paired up with that Dragapult, because I think the critical thing in that game too was Dynamax and Tyranitar going for those max darknesses, because that's what enabled him to be able to get rid of that Blastoise. Now, again, if you're David, you're going to utilize that that Tyranitar is going to be sort of the spanner in the works to your plan. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Tyranitar is maybe going to be the target here of doubling up from the Ndidi and the Blastoise, because expanding force won't do anything but if there's maybe something like a helping hand that could be a little bit precarious yeah and so we did see how much the moon blast was able to do to the blasters after those darknesses so that's probably going to be the path that eddie wants to choose here uh, if he goes for the dynamax on his his dragapult then tyranitar is just completely open to a cannonade which would ko at the end of the turn thanks to that vortex so uh, most likely going to be the tyranitar uh, going for the dynamax on edu's side really wants to get those special defense drops to set up for ko's on the Blastos in the future, and indeed he would definitely be in range of any kind of darkness and an attack from the Dragapult as well. So he'd be able to take out the redirection quickly and start racking up those those special defense drops on the Blastos. Well, last minute clicked in there. No Dynamax in this turn one, which is very interesting. Indeed, he's going for that follow me. Might be a little bit worrying if we see something like the Iron Defense coming out from that Blastoise. Um, Dragon Darts coming out, going into that Indeed, he doubled up, of course, thanks to the follow me and does a decent amount of damage there. Tyranitar going to follow up with an Assurance as well, being super effective. That's really going to be able to pick up the KO. But I feel like Indeed, he might have done its job in this situation. The Expanding Force wouldn't have been able to connect onto that Tyranitar anyway, but it allowed it to to enable the Blastoise to set up that crucial iron defense that it's gone for, while also giving David now the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back and apply some pressure. If it's something like the Arcanine, it can get off and intimidate um, and start applying some pressure to stop Edu from being able to take down this Blastoise even further. Yeah, the iron defense against the two physical attackers is, is really going to make it tough for Eddie to, to break through it. He would still need to go for those darknesses if he wants to rely on the special attackers in the back, but if he doesn't do that, then he yeah, is having to rely on these physical attackers against a plus two defense Blastoise, which doesn't even need to choose the Gigant Defense. It could be going for those body presses, but it looks like the David is content with just getting the boost to the, his defenses so that this Blastoise getting its boost in HP from the Gigant Max is just never going to be KO'd. Yeah, exactly. Dragon Search Blastoise jumping right up into the field, hoping to be able to deal out some good damage while it can. Um, it hasn't been hit by any snarls at this particular stage, so looking to be in a really strong position. Um, Protect coming out from the Dragapult, though, doesn't want to take any potential ice 
um, moves coming out here. Tyranitar goes for the lash out, um, going into that protect there. So really well played there by Edu, going for the protect. As Tyranitar goes for the superpower into the opposing Tyranitar, picks up a really clean one hit KO. But I think it's interesting that Edu is actually ignoring the Blastoise in both of these turns here. It's gone constantly for that partner Pokemon, um, which means that if you're David, you might be able to capitalize on that. Yeah, he's going to be able to get this cannonade off and it's not going to be doing actually too much damage to the Tyranitar at all. Uh, that Sandstorm boost, uh, being able to make it take that attack much more comfortably mm. than I would have expected. So if I, I thought it could have gone down to its focus sash and uh, being able to be KO'd in range of that Vortex, but no, it's able to shrug that out quite well. And the superpower able to take out uh, the Tyranitar on David's side. Uh, he it, It's now down to his last two Pokemon as well. It is going to be that Arcanine as well. It's going to be threatened by the Rock Slides coming out from the Tyranitar. Uh, it's going to be very close if it's going to be in range of uh, another attack from the um, uh, from the Dragapult with the Hailstorm onto it as well. So it hasn't taken too much damage here. Maybe the Dragapult actually wants to go for a Dynamax now. It could be able to go for an Airstream to put the Tyranitar faster than the Arcanine to get a Rock Slide off. It could go for the Phantasms to start reducing those defenses as well of the Blastoise that it got from the Iron Defense. Uh, but yeah, now... David really has to rely on this Blastoise and Arcanine. Two quite not very offensive Pokemon. The Arcanine on mm. David's side has been shown to be very supportive, and Blastoise relies on racking up the damage uh, with the Cannonade. So uh, it's not going to be do doing too much damage, especially as we saw how little that Cannonade ended up doing the to the Tyranitar. It would be in range of another one, but we've seen the Tyranitar does outspeed the Blastoise as well. Yeah, not being able to pick up a KO with that first one. Um, obviously, I mean, it would have gone out to the Focus Sash anyway. Definitely shows the effective output of this Blastoise isn't what David really needs it to be. Um, damage coming out there from the Arcanine, going to do a little bit of damage, uh, but not too much to stop the Rock Slide coming out here from the Tyranitar. As you can see, though, might as well have not gone for it. Manages to avoid um, the Arcanine and does very, very little to that Blastoise. Um, I feel like actually Sand has been the poke, the sort of the damage output here in this particular turn. Um, but Blastoise just sitting on that field being so so defensive in this situation yeah and Tyranitar being able to survive on one hp from the cannonade <laughs> yeah. as well uh, so be able to stall out that the gigantamax even more because uh, this will be the final turn of the gigantamax from the blast list. that phantom force being able to avoid the, he avoid the hailstorm be able to do a lot of damage to this arcane as well is it, with that critical hit is, is very good for, for edu here yeah i mean the thing is if the arcane does go down David does have his really, really strong Blastoise on the field, but can it go through the hole of Edu's team? That would be the question. Tyranitar is going to be KO'd, so maybe Blastoise doesn't have as many opponents to try and fend off in this particular situation. Going for the Max Hailstorm now that the Dragapult is back on the field, um, and at such low health, wouldn't be surprised to see us be able to pick up the KO, and that's exactly what's happened. So, actually, this duo of Arcanine and Blastoise really putting in some work. Um, able to have that longevity on the field with its defensive bulk, Arcanine obviously having access to its berry as well being able to restore some hp going into these last couple of turns of the game and brings the playing field um a lot more level going into the end game yeah but the problem i see for for david is here is how does he break through this pre marina now uh, he's only got his arcanine and the blastoise left we've seen all of the moves on the blastoise all of its coverage moves will be not very effective against the pre marina edu's held off on his dynamax he can go for a dynamax on the pre marina would easily be able to pick up the ko on the arcanine uh, would only have to take one snarl for its troubles before it was able to pick up that knockout. And so Blastoise doesn't have access to any kind of recovery, so it mm. will be able to just be slowly chipped away, even with that Psychic Seed boost, uh, reducing the damage output from the Prune Arena. Uh, the snarls from the Arcanines would be able to reduce the, the damage output from the Blastoise as well. Also, if he wants to go for a Will-O-Wisp, which is what we are seeing to reduce the damage from oh. the Body Press, uh, is going to be able to avoid, though. Yeah, it does manage to avoid and Snarl doing a little bit of chip onto both the Pokemon of Eduardo here. And I think chip damage is really what it's going to come down to, whether it's from Life Orb Recoil, whether it's from the Hail. Um, Blastoise just going straight for the Body Presser into the opposing Arcanine. Um, does do a decent chunk of damage there as Primarina follows up with a Hyper Voice. Um, poor Arcanine is going to be super effective damage. Going to fall victim to that Hyper Voice, leaving Blastoise as the last chance here for David. And you can see the chip constantly coming around here, whether it's the Hail, whether it's the Life Orb. Um, and Arcanine here on Edu's side can still apply more chip pressure with something like that Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, and 
Rennie needs to uh, re reduce the damage output from that body press as well. It still will be doing significant damage to the pre-marina, so if he connects with the Will-O-Wisp, then the Blasters really won't be able to touch that, that pre-marina. Interesting choice to hold off on the, the Dynamax the, for the previous turn from the pre-marina. He did have the chance to go for it. He will be going for it this turn, uh, but maybe wants that slight bit of extra chip from the Hyper Voice, which was still going to be enough to KO the Arc-9. Uh, so didn't need to go for the guys at that turn to be able to take it out and able to hold off one turn before it's going for that Dynamax. Yeah, I actually agree with that. Being able to still KO the Arcanine but get that little bit of extra chip on the Blastoise could be critical when we go into these stages. And I always think if you're able to hold your Dynamax till the end with a relatively healthy Pokemon like Pre-Marina has been, that's a really, really good advantage to have in this type of situation. Blastoise here will this time be targeted um, by the will o -Wisp. will be falling victim to a little bit of chip damage at the end of every turn. Does go for the Blizzard, does manage to connect thanks to the Hail, um, and will be getting a critical hit, but you can just see the very small damage that it was able to deal out in contrast to that really powerful max strike i mean this pre marina correct me if i'm wrong i think i only maybe took one snarl um if it's not at all um but with the life orb it's still able to deal so much damage going into that blastoise yeah, we've just seen the, the strength of the Dynamax coming out here, being able to do a lot of damage to the Blastoise. Blizzard Freeze was a way out for, for David. <laughs> uh, he wasn't able, it wasn't going to be missing that in the Hailstorm, so that was a chance to be able to take out the Green Marina. And it didn't go for a Starfall this turn, it went for a Strike, but we did see before, Green Marina was able to outspeed Blastoise with an Airstream, so would be able to outspeed with a Strike and would just be able to Starfall, taking away the last chance that uh, the Blastoise would have to be able to bring this game back for David. And so he's going to end up forfeiting, and Edu will be taking this final game. I mean, that was a really exciting set. In that game one, David played so strongly, was really able to kind of move around the plays that Edu was making, and was constantly making him do defensive plays, and David was able to capitalize on it. In that game two, changing up his lead with the Blastoise and Didi, again, looked to be so, so strong. Um, Edu was able to manage to take it back, but it was close. So that game three really could have been anyone's game. And I feel like David going for the same lead, but this time changing up and going for that iron defense straight away and boosting himself up, again, looked to be in a really, really good position. But Edu actually was, it was quite brave, but also really wise when you look at it, constantly targeting down that partner Pokemon, removing all the other threats from the field, just leaving Blastoise on its own and saving his Dynamax for the end was so critical. I mean, amazing play by Edu. Yeah, there was no real way for, for David to break through that Primarina with the Pokemon he bought. Uh, they indeed he would have mm. been able to do reasonable damage with the Expanding Force, but it went down on the first turn. So uh, after after Eddie was able to just take out two Pokemon in two turns, uh, the only one, ones that could really do damage to the Primarina, he really had to rely on chip damage on the Primarina to be able to take mm -hmm. it out. But the best way of chipping it was that Cannonade, and it was just completely immune. So uh, only the Hailstorm chip and the Life Orb Recoil was going to, going to be doing damage to the Primarina, but being able to save the Primarina in the, in the back for Edu, uh, wasting all the turns of the, the Gigantamax on the blast, so being able to bring it in afterwards um, meant that there was no real way for David to break mm -hmm. through it. Yeah, Pre-Marina really was the star of the show. So well done, Pre-Marina, for doing well. But also, just got to give a little bit of credit to the other awards type Blastoise. It was just lovely to be able to showcase that G-Max in action. Yeah, yeah, it's a Pokemon that I think has a lot of potential and very interesting sets um, coming out from the Blastoise. Iron Defense Body Press was probably not the, mm -hmm. set, the set that people would be considering. You're probably thinking of Shell Smashers, the setup move of choice 